Today's topic is uh, 4.2, the unit circle, and that's on pages 180 to 190 in your textbook. Our curriculum outcomes, again, we're trying to extend our understanding of angles and standard position expressed in degrees and radians. Our lesson objectives, number one, you need to learn what the unit circle is and to find the equation of the unit circle. Number two, you need to use the equation of the unit circle to find the coordinates of any points that appear on that circle. And number three, finding the coordinates of points for some important angles around the unit circle. Those are our three lesson objectives. So the first thing we need to talk about is what the unit circle actually is. So the unit circle is the circle centered at the origin that has a radius of one. So here's our circle, here's the origin, and it doesn't matter where you go around this circle, it has a radius of one. So this point here, point A is one comma zero, point B zero comma one, et cetera, et cetera. So a radius of one all the way around this circle. What we're gonna find is the equation of the unit circle. So what you can do is you can pick any point on this unit circle. We're gonna give it coordinates x comma y. Now in choosing this point, we can also now make a right triangle. And that means that it has a side length of x here and a side length of y there because it's just the coordinates of that point. So the equation of the unit circle can be found by just using the Pythagorean theorem where we have x squared plus y squared then is equal to our hypotenuse which happens to be one because that is the radius. So this is the equation of the unit circle. Nothing too mind-blowing but it's x squared plus y squared equals one. So if we picked any point on here, say this point right here, we know is one comma zero. If we plug it into this equation, it should satisfy the equation. So we have an X value of one. So that's one squared plus zero squared should equal one. And it does. So this is what we call the equation of the unit circle. First example. Find the equation of a circle that is centered on the origin and has a radius of nine. Well, we know that we just had the unit circle, which had a radius of one, and it was found by using the Pythagorean theorem. So instead of having a one here, what we're gonna do is put in a nine. So it's pretty simple. It just happens to be nine squared. So the equation of this circle is x squared plus y squared equals 81. Second example it says find the missing coordinates if the following point is on the unit circle. So unit circle means it has it definitely has a radius of one. So here's our, our point. We've got negative three quarters comma y. So we can plug that into our equation for the unit circle where x is negative three quarters and we don't know y yet. So if we square negative three quarters, we get nine sixteenths. If we move the 9 sixteenths over to the other side, that means we'll be subtracting 9 sixteenths. When we're subtracting with fractions, we need a common denominator. So that would be, make this one a 16 over 16, minus nine over 16. 16 minus nine is seven. And that means that y is going to be the square root of seven over 16. Now, we also have to remember with the square root property that this becomes a positive and a negative. And so we actually have two answers. We have positive and negative root seven over four. And hopefully that should make sense because when we're talking about our unit circle and we have an X value of negative three quarters, say it's right here, there should be two different values for Y. All right, so we're gonna now use the unit circle to find the coordinates of multiples of the following angles, pi over four, pi over six, and pi over three. So back to our lesson from the other day, these are all in radian measurement. So hopefully you remember that pi over four, that's a quarter of pi. So if pi we said was 180 degrees, then a quarter of pi is actually gonna be 45 degrees. So we're gonna be finding all the multiples of 45 degrees. So here's our unit circle, our Angle for pi over four is right here. We're trying to find out what exactly the x value is and the y value is of that point. So again, we can use this concept of a right triangle. Now the thing with a 45 degree angle is if you remember, we had a 45, 45, 90 triangle as one of our special right triangles. We said in a 45, 45, 90 triangle, these two sides are exactly the same. So we gave them a, each a value of one, which means that this is a value of root two. Now, unfortunately, we know that this is a unit circle. 
and that this has to be have a radius of one. So it can't actually be root two. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna divide everything by root two. So, because we know that the hypotenuse has to have a radius of one. And when we do that, what we get is a one, we get one over root two, which is actually just root two over two, because remember you can't have a root in the denominator. And we get root two over two, not root two. So here we have root two over two for that coordinate and root two over two for that coordinate. So the coordinates of pi over four are actually root two over two comma root two over two. Because that's how far it is over to the right and that's how far it is up. If we do a similar triangle over here in quadrant number two, remember the other day we said this is pi over four, this would be two pi over four, this would now be three pi over four. Now the only thing that's different in this triangle is that the x value happens to be negative. Still has a radius of one because it's a unit circle and we still have a 45 degree angle here. So what this ends up being is root two over two over here, but a negative root two over two on the x-axis. So the coordinates happen to have the exact same uh, values except one of them is negative and that's the x-value in this case. So we've got three pi over four, this would be four pi over four. Coming into this next quadrant is five pi over four. Making that right triangle again, we still have a radius of one. We still have an x value that happens to be negative, but in this case, our y value is also negative because it's in quadrant number three. So the coordinates here are negative root two over two and negative root two over two. And finally to round it off, we had uh, five pi over four, six pi over four, and so we have seven pi over four. And following the pattern, I don't think we need to draw this triangle anymore. We know that the two values should be the same. We just have to figure out which one is gonna be positive and which one's gonna be negative. Well, it's in quadrant number four, so the x value happens to be positive, and since you're going down, that means the y value is negative. So every angle that is a multiple of pi over four, so one pi over four, three pi over four, five pi over four, seven pi over four, all have the same coordinates except the values can either be positive or negative. And that positive or negative depends on which quadrant you're in. All right, next one we're gonna do is we're gonna find all the multiples of pi over six. We're gonna find the coordinates of every angle for pi over six. So remember, 180 degrees is equal to pi. So 180 divided by six is 30 degrees. So we're gonna be looking at a, at a 30 degree angle. Now, the way that we just found all our values for pi over four is we used a 45, 45, 90 triangle. In this case, we've got a 30 degree angle. So we're gonna use a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So you need to remember your special right triangles from last year. We said that the shortest side always had a value of one the hypotenuse always had a value of two, and the longest side always had a value of root three. Now again, because this is a unit circle, we need to make sure that we have a value of one for our hypotenuse, so we divide everything by a value of two. So our new coordinates, or our new side lengths, are root three over two and a half. And this is for a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So for pi over six, we've got um, uh, x value that moves all the way to the right, a value of root three over two, and we've got a y value up of a half. Our next value would be this one over here. Now, if you consider this six pi over six, because it's a one full pi or 180 degrees, then if we subtract a pi over six, we're now at five pi over six. So again, with the, the same thing that we realized last time when we're making a 30, 60, 90 triangle, these two side lengths actually don't change. The only thing that changes is what's positive and what's negative. So the values remain the same. And what's negative here is the X value because we're in quadrant number two. The Y value is still positive. All right, our next angle would be over here. So this is five pi over six, six pi over six. This will be seven pi over six. 
And now we're looking at the same x and the same y. So we have root three over two and a half. However, um, they're both negative because we're in quadrant number three. X value is negative, Y value is negative. And our last one right here. If this is one full rotation around the unit circle, that's two pi. So that would be 12 pi over six. So if we go backwards one uh, pi over six, we're at 11 pi over six. And again, we're just working with fractions, which is something you have to do a lot in this unit. Again, we've got root three over two and a half. It's now that the x value is positive, but the y value is negative. So our final angle is pi over three. So remembering that 180 degrees is equal to pi, we're actually looking at a triangle with a 60 degree angle. So something around here. So this is pi over three. And remember that this now makes a 60, 30 triangle, which we just worked with, except it's just kind of flipped on its side. So we have a half here, we had root three over two here, and we had a one here. So now the x value for this triangle is a half, and the y value is root three over two. Our next value of pi over three that we're gonna look at is gonna be right here. So if this was a full pi and we went back pi over three, so that would be three pi over three minus pi over three is two pi over three. Coordinates again are gonna be the same because we still make the same kind of triangle. And we get a half and root three over two, but X is negative in quadrant two. So we do go two pi over three, three pi over three, and then we're looking at four pi over three. And our X value and our Y value are both negative in quadrant three. So we know that the coordinates are the same numbers, except they're both negative. And finally over here, if we had two full pi here, that would be six pi over three, minus pi over three is five pi over three. Coordinates again, a half, root three over two, but in the fourth quadrant, y is negative. So in summary, the unit circle is the circle that has a radius of one and is centered on the origin. The equation of this circle is x squared plus y squared equals one. You can find the coordinates of any point on the unit circle by using the equation of the unit circle. We talked about the coordinates of uh, multiples of pi over four on that unit circle, and those coordinates are root two over two and root two over two. Multiples of pi over six have coordinates of root three over two and a half, and multiples of pi over three have coordinates of a half and root three over two. Now, the only thing that changes is what quadrant it, it lies in. So those angles, if they're in quadrant one, both the X and the Y values are both positive. Quadrant two, the X is negative, but the Y is positive. Quadrant three, they're both negative. And in quadrant four, the X is positive, but the Y is negative. And so your assignment is on pages 186 to 190. Uh, good luck and see you in class.